I'm uh, Dr. John Lunahan. I work with uh, Mimic Technologies in Seattle, Washington. We're a robotic surgery simulation company, and I'm a robotic surgeon. Um, but I'm interviewing today um, a teacher from South Carolina who uh, is using our Mimic technology to work with her students. Ms. Drennan, uh, I'd like you to introduce yourself and kind of explain who you are and what your program is to us. Sure. Thank you so much for having us. Um, my name is Erin Drennan, and I am a teacher in South Carolina. My background is a registered nurse, and so um, have those fun medical stories and know the value of the instrumentation and all of that as I came into the teaching world. I started with teaching Project Lead the Way Biomedical Sciences, and that is designed, a curriculum designed for high school students that want to go into medical careers, so there's lots of career exploration in those classes. It's four different levels. Whenever I started looking to the Flex VR, um, it was in reference to one of our curriculum activities that had them do a simulation of a nephrectomy. And the, the actual activity was designed um, for me to get a cardboard box <laughs> with some of the extender arms and webcams and for me to make that apparatus for them to practice um, a robotic surgery type situation. And so I said, well, how cool would that be if we had something a little more realistic? And so I started looking out there at the possibilities. Um, this is a project-based, very hands-on curriculum. We try to get as much instrumentation in here as we can to get them practice with real world stuff. We've got lots of molecular biology pieces of equipment. We have ultrasound, we have IV arm simulations. Um, 3D printers, VR goggles, things like that. So we want them to be able to practice. Um, I tell them that it's just as important for them to notice that this is not something they want to do with their future as it is that they do while it's still free and before we've invested all that time and money. So um, that was the original insight for looking to find this piece of equipment. Do you have a background yeah. on uh, the owner? Yeah, so I started out um, in late delivery, and um, so I had experience in um, C-sections and um, different GYN surgeries. Whenever we started messing with it, they, I, I was super thankful my mission did support the financial commitment. Um, we looked at several different grant options for the career and technology learning, and and we were able to secure this through um, some Perkins grant funding. And, um, and then we just started playing with it once it got here. And I was totally blown away at the students' abilities, innate abilities, um, to be able to run it. Um, not much pressure um, whenever you're just hanging out with your friends playing with it. Um, but then we started with some competitions and um, seeing who could get better scores, the feedback um, ability for them to show them how well they're doing with the different skills is great so that they can um, feel confident with what they've learned and, and continue on with that. So I have really enjoyed it. They've really enjoyed it. They're going to share that with you here in a minute. Um, in the future, I hope to um, use it as a recruitment tool into my program. I think it's a great career exploratory um, ability for them to be able to play with it in this class um, before they get out there. Lots of students come in saying they want to be surgeons, and so we want to show them what the future of surgery looks like and that um, this is um, as close as we can get in our high school classroom um, with them being able to actually touch it and and practice that's, with it. That's a very interesting approach. Um, I recall um, we have, uh, I'm in Seattle, Washington. We have a, a Western Washington State Fair and about 12, 14 years ago, we brought a Da Vinci robot to the State Fair trying to show off our uh, minimally invasive surgery program. And when I came to visit the exhibit one morning, the line was all the way out the door and around the block was all teenagers who wanted to do this. And they came up to me and said, uh, how do we get to do this? And I said, well, go to medical school and become a surgeon. That's how you do this. So I think, right. I think this is this is where <laughs> surgery is going. You know, robotic surgery is branching across all specialties now. And it is, you know, we're in the future, your students and they, uh, are not going to be meatball or hands open surgeries, except maybe for C-sections, but uh, everything else is going to be done with computers. So Right. Uh, very, very cool that you, uh, your administration was able to fund this. And it, it sounds like the students are really getting excited about it. They are. They definitely are. We even have a, the fourth level of our um, progression in the biomedical 
medical sciences is a research component. Wow. And um, last last school year before COVID hit, we were able to run um, a couple research projects on it, which was fun. We had one student to research the use of music and if that um, affected her skill levels, um, her speed, her accuracy, those types of um, parameters that you guys give feedback on. And so that was a neat part of it for them to be able to practice real life, um, how well they were and how they can manipulate different variables that could maybe possibly improve their skills in the future. Very, very cool. There's, um, we, we can partner on that. There's lots of uh, interesting uh, research out there, whether if you're a musician or if you're a sports athlete or if you play video games, if that improves your performance. Right. Uh, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, often it doesn't, but, uh, uh, but anyway. Yeah. Um, well, great. that's really, really cool. So you have some students with you today. That, uh, I do. I do. Come on over. I am Edwin Beatrice. I'm in 11th grade, and I want to become a robotics surgeon. Hi, um, I'm Lucia Billups. I'm a junior, and I aspire to be an orthopedic surgeon. The robot you're on is designed by one company. Now there's many companies that are building them, but it's designed to do pelvic and abdominal and lung cavity surgery with inside the body. Orthopedics is a whole nother industry that has uh, hard surgeries and they have robots too that'll do hips and knees and shoulders and all. What, what kind of surgery were you interested in becoming in surgery? Probably like cardiac. Cardiac. Oh, another. Uh, the robot was initially designed for heart surgery. You know how the robot came into existence? It was, it was designed by the military for battlefield surgery because they wanted to get surgeons off of the battlefield and behind safe lines. So the robot was going to do the surgery. So it was really designed to do life-saving cardiovascular surgery. And, and then um, the uh, military got so good at medical air evacuation, they didn't need it anymore. So it moved into the world of urology and gynecology and general surgery. Do you have any plans for any research with the robot? Do you have uh, your, uh, Mrs. Drennan talked about you know, your projects, what kind of projects are you doing with it? Right now I'm researching which suturing technique is the strongest on ACL repairs. So I'm cutting tendons out of cow knees, like the knees of a cow. And I'm, suture, I'm using three different types of sutures. And then I'm using a simulator to test like the strength of it. And I'm measuring like where it would pull cool. apart. Very good, how about you? And I'm cutting out tricuspid valves from she parts, trying to figure out what type of glues I could use to like see how what the strength and flexibility of the glue being attached with the tricuspid valve. Are you uh, watching any real surgical videos to any teaching videos to kind of learn how to do this? Yes. Where do you, where do you get those? Uh, on YouTube, there's... YouTube. I can give Mrs. Drennan some uh, information on places she can go to actually get real teaching videos if she's interested. We might be able to work that out for you. She mentioned you all are doing competitions. Tell me about that. How does that work? At the beginning, we just started off by playing around with the uh, Flex VR, and then more people got interested on using it. And so then Ms. Drennan Ms. Drennan wanted us to compete against each other to see who got like the best scores. She <laughs> she beat me and <laughs> hate to admit it, but yeah, she beat me on completing the task. Which um, exercises are you using? For that round, we did the one where we had to uh, get the blocks and numbers and put them onto the box. Okay. Pegboards and- Pegboard, yeah. Pegboard one, yep. two, and three. Have you uh, found the stacking challenge exercise? Yeah, that one was kind of difficult, but it was it was really fun. That was the uh, that's the one when we have medical meetings. Um, we usually will have an Olympic competition, and we'll put the stacking challenge up, and people will do it at the uh, booths. And then when we get the four best surgeons. Uh, then we do it on a stage in front of everybody and they compete to see who wins the prize. The prize is usually uh, free admission to the meeting for next year, which is like four. <laughs> so it's a, it's a pretty good. <laughs> well, hopefully I'll be prepared for that competition. You'll be prepared for that. All right. So um, what are your goals when you get out of school? Now you're both juniors. You've got um, this crazy year left. And then next year, where, where do you want to go then? I was planning on going to Clemson University to get my undergraduate for pre-med. And then right after that, 
I want to go straight to medical school, but at the moment, I still haven't decided on what school I want to go to. I plan on attending USC and majoring in bioengineering, and then afterwards, I plan on going on to medical school. Well, bioengineering and robotics go hand in hand. I mean, it's, uh, it's one thing to become a doctor and another thing to become a surgeon, but engineers understand how all this can work and, and uh, develop. Um, so very, very interesting. Um, well, what advice would you give to other students who are interested in something like this? I would say to persuade your teachers to get the Flex VR since it is really fun to play around with and having fun competitions with classmates. Well, considering robotic surgery is the future of healthcare, it really does put us at an advantage to be able to learn how to use this and perfect skills at a younger age. So I, I do strongly advise you to convince your teachers to buy this. Are all the students in your classes excited or some of you more excited than others who want to go different ways or what? Uh, well, I think some of it's like half and half. Some people are really excited about it and like are excited about using the device and some of them want to focus on different aspects of medicine and equipment. Well, there's that covers the spectrum. Well, thank you very much for your time today. That's very, very interesting. You're one of the few high schools in the United States that has a robotic surgery training program in it. So uh, that is very, very, very cool. You really got a good program going there. They're very, very cool. What, what advice would you give to other uh, health and science teachers around in high schools? I mean, is this really worth it to go to all the trouble to get this, this very expensive piece of equipment that has such a narrow training focus? Yeah, I do think it is. Um, I think we, we're going to talk more about this, but um, if if there is a way for us to get a little less expensive, I think the number is what intimidates a lot of people. Um, but if we can get one that's a little bit more economical, um, I think there would be more that would be able to use it. But absolutely, it's worth the while. Um, the kids, that piece of equipment and my um, VR goggles, they that captures them. And then once you have them captured, you can do lots of fun things. Uh, Which so that, VR goggles do you have? What do, you, do you have your own VR goggles or do you have the ones we make? I have the Oculus. Um, it's a separate system. Right. Oculus Rift, I think is what it's called. What do you do with that? So we've gone on and found several different um, software that they have. There's three particular ones that's all about anatomy. And so they're physically inside of the body and can look around and things like that. Um, and then we've we've got several games that they like to play that are a little less educational. But when we're learning about a certain body system, the the software will then will send them over to that area where the software will teach them things like different EKG rhythms and gotcha. um, malformations, and they can physically see what's happening anatomically inside. We have a, um, I don't know if you've, you have your students been to see a real robotic surgery or a real robot? They haven't, no. They haven't. All right. The, uh, the robot, that, that would be something would be maybe we can help coordinate with one of your local hospitals there if I know some of the people, but the, the real robot is a big, right now, a big machine that then you have to move into the room and put next to the patient and connect to the patient. And that's a very challenging part of a, a system to learn. And we have an Oculus program that you can do that with uh -huh. one or two people to bring the robot in and connect it to the patient and get it all set up for surgery and move like that. So maybe we'll share some of that with you too. Yeah, which would probably be even maybe a different career path, like a technology. Right. Um, surgical tech type thing. Well, that, the, the robot, is, it's very interesting that, uh, you know, with normal surgery, like C-section or anything, it's the surgeon and the assistant, and you got anesthesia nurses, and the surgeon pretty much does it all. But with robots, uh, the surgeon's way off in the corner operating a computer, and the people in the room have to do it all. So the, the whole communication right. thing and the whole reliance on your team is much, much more important with robotics. than uh, So the, the surgeon not only has to be a surgeon, he has to be a team leader to get everybody on the same page doing the right thing. So that's where the Oculus comes in to help people train as teams. Okay. And, and, and that is the future of surgical healthcare is teamwork as opposed to just a surgeon. Doing absolutely, it. absolutely. And it'd be a great skill for them to learn at this level as well, that you've got to work together with everyone. Well, I digress. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much for your time today. Um, yeah. Again, uh, if, if any other teachers around the country that see this or people in high schools want to contact you, how would they do that? Yeah, so um, you can look up Hamilton Career and Technology Center, um, and my email is linked there, Erin Drennan under Biomedical Sciences. 
um, in school district of Oconee County. And you reach out on it however you would like. Um, I know a lot of my Project Lead the Way um, cohorts are interested um, if they can secure the finances, but absolutely any other engineering, pre-engineering, um, those types of different subject areas would definitely benefit from this. So let me know how I can help. I will make sure we get that information tagged onto this video. Again, uh, Ms. Drennan, thank you very, very much for your time. I'm very uh, excited about your program, a very creative opportunity, and most like your students are excited about it too, and that's really cool. They are. Thank you so much for having us.